Today is the first step toward a future of glory and fame. A life of sacrifice, but a life of honor. These panels of which you stand on will soon launch toward the forest below, where you will not only earn your way into Beacon Academy, but you will find your partner and your team for the next four years, training, growing, and fighting alongside one another. Make your kingdoms proud. With that final word, the headmaster hit the button. I heard the clicking of the panel beneath my feet. Breathing in, I centered myself. Breathing out, I felt the fires of determination as the panel catapulted me forward, the wind cutting into my face, trees blurring beneath me as I flew across. I turned my body as soon as I felt my descent landing on a branch. I didn't waste time and took out Last Whisper in its anti-material rifle form. I made sure it was loaded and leaped out of the tree. My gray spotted tail swayed back and forth, my eyes narrowed on the hunt. I don't have as much experience fighting Grimm as I did people. The occasional Beowulf with mantle was the only Grimm-related threat I faced, but I was prepared. I was ready. I didn't need any more trophies. I didn't even need partners or a team. I am self-sustaining. To my luck, there weren't any signs of Grimm nearby as I ran towards the center of the forest. Some psychotic student with the stupid urge to prove why they are the strongest would be disappointed that there are no Grimm to prove any such statement. A smart fighter of any background would know it's best to avoid any unnecessary conflicts if possible. It would be amazing if I could just use my semblance to silence my footsteps, but of course, that would run down my aura, and in an unknown area such as this, silencing myself would be potentially the stupidest thing I could do. I took a moment to stop, after running an estimate of two miles, and took out my canteen and took a few gulps of water. That's when I heard the familiar howls of Beowulves. Didn't sound too many, maybe like three, four. I turned on my semblance, my surroundings becoming silent to all outside my personal space. Sneaking through the brush and trees, finding the, now confirmed, three Beowulves. They all seemed to be in a stalking position, meaning they have found prey. I pulled out Last Whisper and aimed the anti-material rifle at the Grim in the back. I gave my own countdown, making sure I was steady and ready for a kill shot. I was thrown off focus when I heard an almost feral yet human growl as a young man ran into them and cut the first one through the throat, rolling to the second one and stabbed into its heart. Both disappear almost simultaneously. I was so shocked at someone charging into these beasts with little to no concern for their own safety. I saw the third Beowulf lunging itself at him. My reaction time slowed and he got a few cuts through his shirt. I immediately go back to aiming at the Beowulf. This gave me an opportunity to shoot. He looked malnourished, like the slightest breeze could knock him over, his long cat tail twitching. I shook my head and immediately took aim again. I let out a gentle breath, and right when the Beowulf launched itself for the attack, I fired the shot. The round hit its mark through the heart of the Beowulf. Just as the previous two, it vanished in a dark mist. I sighed and put down the gun and started walking out of the forest, releasing my semblance, his head immediately whipping around to hear the sudden noises of my footsteps, putting my gun on my back. He struggled to get up, his eyes wild, still full of adrenaline. I held up my hands again, showing that I had no weapons. See, I am completely unarmed. The young man nodded and sheathed his sword, his eyes an emerald green, his tail swaying back and forth apprehensively. At that moment, our scrolls rang out with an announcement. Ashley Figueroa and Rowan Rainier are now partners. Please make your way to the center to complete initiation. Well, that makes introductions a lot easier. I tried my best to smile, but the fellow cat faunus just stared. I could tell he had a massive distrust in me. Though it irritated me a little bit, I could understand from being a faunus and mantle. Well, uh... Let's just go on to the center. It's probably close. The boy nodded, though still not saying anything. The image of him made me feel sorry for him. His face gaunt, his arms and body skinny with some awkwardly formed muscle. I had seen people like this on the streets of Mantle. It was a miracle that he could hold his own against a Beowulf, let alone two of them. It made me wonder what kind of life this Faunus had before joining Beacon Academy's new recruits. He walked with such focus. He never looked over at me. Not even a side glance. I sighed and looked at him, still trying to remember his appearance. 
he looked like he could be handsome, given a few extra pounds. His hair, long and messy. He had a bit of a stench. It was offensive, but if anything, it just added to the sympathy. So, where are you from? He never looked away from the path. And just as I thought he would be silent, he opened up his mouth and barely audible. Theodore. His voice was quiet and raspy, sounding as if it had been a while since he's had a drink. I looked and just now noticed that he had no supplies, only his sword. I quickly took my canteen off and handed it to Rowan. Did you prepare anything? It came off more annoyed than I intended. He looked at the canteen as I witnessed a moment of apprehension in his eyes. I shook it, letting the water swish around inside. What's wrong? You scared I poisoned it? I took another swig of it and swallowed, letting him look at me, thrusting it back towards him. Now drink. Again, he looked at it, but slowly reached his hand and took the canteen. I sighed in relief as he took a swig. It wasn't a big one, but it was enough, and he handed it back to me. Thank you. His voice sounded a little clearer as he refocused on the path ahead. I found myself listing all of the things I have observed so far. Distrust, malnourishment, apprehension to something given to him. Only the most oblivious wouldn't see the obvious signs of abuse. This is going to be complex. I had my own issues to work out, and now I was partnered with someone who was a ticking time bomb of PTSD. I internally sighed and gestured forward. He nodded and walked in front. I followed behind him. We walked for what felt like at least an hour until we were met with a clearing. In the middle of this clearing was a pedestal with a variety of chess pieces. We're... safe? He seemed almost disappointed. Anything wrong about that? It's a forest. It should be crawling with Grim. You from a forest area? He nodded. He seemed almost uncomfortable that nothing happened. I didn't bother asking about it and just grabbed the artifact, a white rook, walking back to him. I did a small smile and he nodded his head, and we sat down against a nearby tree enjoying the shade. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Usually, I wouldn't prod conversation with people, but if I'm going to be stuck with him, communication has to be established somehow. He didn't look at me as he stared forward. He took a gentle, deep breath, his ribs being even more visible. Not much to say. I hunt grim. Day till night, I hunt. My village isn't the most technical. We hunt and survive. His tone was direct. It made my head hurt. I wanted to snap back, but I bit my tongue. What about your family? He looked at me. His eyes were more concerned, if only for a moment, and he looked away again. I felt a rush go through my body as he stared. His eyes were fierce, but oddly beautiful. He looked away just as quickly. My dad, his mate, three siblings. Mate? I looked at him curiously. Does his dad have a friend living with him? I mean, I've heard a lot of Fauna's stereotypes about us having mates, but surely it's not... It's... our version of marriage. It is. It fucking is. What in the actual fuck was this village? I... see. I had to contain myself, as much of a setback as that feels like. If it's this guy's... Uh, culture, then I can't really tell him it's wrong. But what the fuck? Like, I'm far from a Faunus rights activist, I just want to hunt Grimm, make a difference here and there, but to actually call my lover a mate? I just feel like it might be a bit of a turnaround. So, uh, do you have a mate? The question just came out reflexively. I couldn't catch it before it spilled out. I felt my face get hot. Never mind. I turned to him after my exclamation and I saw his demeanor change. 
His thin frame was tense, his eyes darkened, his jaw set. Let's talk about something else. Unlike his direct, near-emotionless tone, this was painful, holding back a lot. I don't know what this faunus went through, but again, instinctively, I put my hand on his shoulder. Alright, that's fine. My voice was soft. He tensed more when I touched him, and he moved away from me a little bit. I guess I did overstep his boundaries. We sat in silence, his expression returning to its original state. I, on the other hand, felt incredibly awkward after what had occurred. That's when we heard the next couple of voices. The duo, too, was a guy and a girl. The guy was tall, relatively muscular, a vacant stare, and purple hair and a ponytail. The girl, on the other hand, had orange hair, bright yellow eyes, a curvy build, and was talking non-stop. As awkward as the silence was, hearing this girl talk about her life story was in the nicest way possible, the equivalent of nails on a chalkboard. Hearing about veil this and she said that was nothing short but inhumane torture. But at least she wasn't on my team. I could just ignore everything she could ever say. Ashley Figura, Rowan Rainier, Sunny Breeze, and Murado Core are now a team. Please wait in your current location for extraction. My head shot up so fast as I was horrified at what I just heard. Please tell me that wasn't their names. I saw them on the platform, holding the white rook. Son of a bitch! I screamed in my head. So now I got my partner who barely talks at all, a girl who seems to never stop talking, and a guy who looks like the only thought that goes through his brain is protein. I was displeased until I heard a screech that shattered the feelings of irritation. Rowan was the first to stand up, his sword drawn and in a fighting stance. His eyes narrowed. Rowan, what is it? Griffins. I was about to ask for more info until three flying black creatures swooped in. They looked like a combination of eagles and lions. Long claws on each paw. Huge black wings carrying the body with speed. The head of a large beaked bird skull. Rowan tackled me as one charged at me. I heard fabric tearing and immediately looked at him. His face seemed pain, but he still stood up off of me and helped me up. The two other teammates already had their weapons drawn and were opening fire on the approaching Grim. My eyes went wide as he turned around to help our new teammates. Long red cuts going across his mid-back, bleeding. Rowan, you're back! No time. Our team needs our help. I put my hands into fists. There'd be no point in helping them if he dies. But his weapon didn't seem very suited for this kind of combat, so... <sighs> Looks like I'm gonna have to pick up the slack. I pulled up my rifle. Got it ready and aimed at the nearest Grim I could spot and fired one bullet. I knew exactly where the bullet was going, as one of the Grim was hit in the wing and looked over at us. I could only stand my ground as the observant red eyes of the Grim blinked once and launched itself forward, unable to fly. Rowan, even with his injury, charged forward towards the Griffin. It screeched at the young hunter's challenge. I had to switch to being support for my new teammates. Murado, I think, was fighting with two axe pistols, occasionally slashing at one to keep it at a distance. Sunny had a whip and was using it to cause damage, albeit very little damage, but damage nonetheless. I could see Rowan from the corner of my eye. He was primarily just dodging, trying to find a good angle to put in the final kill. It was obvious that with his build, or lack thereof, he was meant to take out enemies as fast as he could. That is definitely going to have to change when we get into Beacon. I noticed he barely dodged a swipe and stumbled back. I gritted my teeth, changing my position and fired at the Grim. It was hit in the other wing. Another horrific screech was heard. Rowan took that opportunity to strike it down. He didn't waste time. After nodding his thanks towards me, he ran towards the other two. Rowan! He nearly stumbled from the yelling. His wound looked dirty. I couldn't have him fighting and falling and getting that wound infected. I fired a couple shots to allow the other two to gain a bit of ground and ran towards my partner. You need to be careful! He looked like he was about to say something, and I stopped him. 
No, you listen to me. I don't care how feral you are, or suicidal, or whatever the fuck. You are not gonna keep running in there and taking hits for people. You aren't going to be bait. So that practice stops now. He looked aggravated. He eventually nodded and relaxed his stance. You two retreat back over here. I fired more shots at the griffins, hitting one wing each, sending them tumbling down as my teammates stood beside me. Okay, so quick question. Do either of you know the definition of strategy and the concept of if it isn't working, change it up? Neither one of them answered at first. Okay, you, Himboflex, prioritize distance. Let Shatterbox and Catboy handle the kill. A Murado core. I don't bring glory and honor without a kill. Oh god, he's one of those. At least Rowan just has the strong intent of killing Grimm. Yeah, well, glory and honor mean nothing if you're dead. So shoot, and keep them distracted enough for our teammates to cover the rest. Murado was about to say something until Sunny touched him. Her voice was a lot more melodic than I first realized. Oh, come on, Murado. Just for us. You gotta stay alive and strong for us. For me. His body stiffened a bit and relaxed. And he nodded, holding his pistols up, ready to shoot when ordered. Sunny went over and touched Rowan, and before Rowan could move away, she spoke. Hold on, sweetie. You need to fight and live too. For us. For me. It's what you should want. Rowan also stiffened and relaxed, though, unlike Murado, he had a lot more confused look on his face as he nodded. Something about that touch made me very weary of Sunny. I looked at her. You touch me, you'll be Grimbait. Just giving our boys some... motivation. I don't care what you're doing. We have problems on our hands, and I need everyone focusing on that, not on some useless eye candy. The Grim had recovered from their injuries and started bounding towards us. Fire! I don't know why I decided to step up into this position, but it seemed like I was the only one trying. I fired shot after shot while Murado emptied his entire clips into the Grim, allowing Rowan to move forward when I nodded him, with Sunny quickly following. Both were flawless, going for the neck. I was satisfied at how easy everything ended. Though, I wasn't nearly naive enough to believe that every confrontation of Grim was going to be this easy. Though I had my concerns how Sunny did things, I'll just let that slip for now. I'm sure that it won't be the last time she'll try and use it. It was not long after that the sounds of aircrafts were heard. I let out a sigh and looked up as the bulkhead began to land. I looked at Rowan, who was finally showing some exhaustion, and his body was tensed up from the pain in his back. Immediately, Hunters under Beacon's employ helped us up onto the bulkhead and sent us back towards Beacon. I sat by Rowan, who was currently getting wrapped up. Jeez, kid, how the hell'd you get this? Didn't anyone teach you to never turn your back on a griffin? I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I could tell the comment was annoying him, but his eyes showed that he was on the edge of his limit. He looked at me, and I gave him an understanding smile. He nodded back at me and moved around to get comfortable and closed his eyes. His breathing was slow and steady. He did seem cuter while he slept. His worries weren't so written on his face. I heard a throat clearing behind me and I jumped and looked behind me. Oh god, did they just see me staring at him? It was my other teammates. Sonny's eyebrow was arched. So what? Are you just gonna ignore us? I mean, we're your teammates too. As much of a point she had, it definitely irked me and took a lot not to just ignore her more. Sorry, just wanted to make sure he's fine. Well, you could just put a tight leash on him. My tail frizzed up, my jaw clenched. This girl had no sense of reading the room. Of course, she seemed the kind of person who thought the room was defined by her. I let Rowan make his own decisions. I'm his partner, not his mother. Hmm. Sunny put her hands on Murado. You seem so very tired. You should sleep. Again, the stiffening and relaxing of Murado's body, followed by the nod as he immediately fell asleep. She looked back at me as if expecting praise. This had to be her semblance. What did you do to him? 
Oh, it's just a simple suggestion is all. If I had any alarms about this girl's integrity, they were all going off. A simple suggestion. Could her semblance be manipulation? Surely there was a limit. Ooh. Someone seems to have figured out my semblance. She seems to enjoy toying with people. This girl could be very bad news. I looked back at Rowan, who was sleeping so soundly. I still had no idea what he went through, but the last thing he needed was for his mind to be just thrown away and used as a plaything for this girl. She could be very dangerous. Oh, don't you go thinking about something as if I'm a monster. I just merely gave him some encouragement. He wouldn't have needed it. Could have fooled me. He stopped so suddenly. Because I told him to. Well, my semblance can be used to help him gain weight. Poor thing. Looks as if he could die at any moment. The more Sunny talked, the angrier I got. She just acted as if his choices were just better left to her. I was only merely annoyed with her before, but now... One touch, and boom! He's dedicated to helping himself. I whipped around and stared into her eyes. My tail fluffed up, my eyes solely focused on her. She was everything I hated about Atlas. All the manipulations, disregarding everyone, pretentious arrogance thinking they know better. She was everything I hated about Atlas. Mm, never touch my partner again. Oh? And what are you gonna do? So many unspeakable things that you will never be the same once I'm finished. Fine. Then you can let your partner starve himself. I was just trying to help the team. Sunny's smile seemed a bit more strained, doubtful. I looked at Rowan once more, surprised but grateful that he didn't wake up from the argument. I heard movement and gripped Sunny's wrist before she could touch me. Touch me and you will have to drop out of Beacon due to mysterious injuries. We are not your toys. We are your team. Learn that or you'll have to deal with a lot more than just a disappointed Beacon staff. Hmm. Fine. Bitch. I sighed, letting the moment end, trying to relax my body. The bulkhead moving towards Beacon. One step closer to becoming hunters.